Hi, and welcome to another edition of Soup to Nuts. I'm your host, Steve Sprague. I'm glad that you could join us. Um, what I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to prepare for you three breakfast dishes, um, and the first of which I'm going to start off with some strawberry pancakes, and I'm going to move on, and I have some Welsh rarebit that I'm going to prepare, and also um, we have a salsa western omelet that I'm going to prepare for you. And the first thing I want to do is I want to start with some strawberries. I have to make the sauce first. I have already pre-made, to save us a little bit of time, I pre-made some uh, pancake batter. I'll give you a recipe for that in a little bit. Um, first thing I want to do is I want to scald, I have here about a cup and a quarter of milk. And I'm going to want to scald that. Scalding, you'll just see when it comes around the edges, you'll start to see bubbles and that's what you're going to want. And while I'm waiting for that to heat up, I'm going to start cutting the strawberries that I have into quarters, like so. You'll need approximately, I would say, maybe two quarts of strawberries, and that'll yield, oh, about 13 to 15 pancakes. So you should probably have plenty. Some of the smaller ones I'll just cut in half. these all up. This time of year they have some pretty decent strawberries in the supermarket. You don't have to get too real picky because you're not eating them just plain. You're gonna, I am gonna add sugar into this as well so they should retain a good flavor. About right like that. a big one. And my milk is just starting to heat up now. This should be done in a second. So get ready to start adding into the strawberries and the sugar. The sauce is relatively simple. All it really is is just you can either use cream or regular milk. I'm using regular milk. And let that heat up. And now what I'm looking for is I'll need to get myself a spoon wherever the boss put them. That'll work just fine. Go ahead and move that around a little. Now let me put this aside. Okay, now hopefully this will scald and I can show you what I'm talking about. Let me turn this down just a bit. I don't want to burn it. All right. Now, actually, the first thing I want to do is I want to start adding in my sugar gradually. And I'm going to start with a quarter of a cup. Like this. So just add it in. Go ahead and stir that around. Now, the reason for adding it gradually is so you don't brown the sugar and so it also doesn't come out in lumps which is exactly what you don't want to do a whisk over here that should work a little better and I can whisk it okay just keep this going now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slowly add it in there like so And you don't want to add too much sugar because when it starts to thicken itself, you'll be surprised how quickly it thickens. So you want to be careful. Okay, I think that's about enough sugar for now. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to add in the strawberries. And that milk is just starting to boil a little bit. And now I'll take my spoon again. And you can, as you're going, you can break up some of the strawberries in there. This might take a little time to do this, so bring that back up a little. Go ahead and let that go. Now 
Well, I'm going ahead and I'm going to start cooking this and let this thicken. I'm going to flash up the recipe for you. And it's a very simple one at that. So why don't you take a look at the recipe and when we come back, we'll have the sauce getting ready to be thickened and it should be all set. And then we'll go ahead and make the pancakes. Okay, we're back. Now, as you can see, my sauce is starting to thicken here. And what I'm going to do is I have a strainer over here to the right of me with a pan underneath it. And I'm going to continue to stir this. It's not quite thick enough for what I'd like it for. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a real syrupy consistency. So I'm going to continue to stir this. I'm going to thicken out a little bit more. And... In a moment, I'm going to pour it through the strainer right there. That's not exactly the strainer that I would have liked to use, but but today I had uh, forgot to bring the other strainer, so we're going to just have to use that one. Now what I want to do is I'm going to keep this going. I still want it to be just a little bit thicker than that before I go ahead and put it through the strainer. And... What you really need to do is you need to eat this while it's still hot because otherwise this will start to thicken real hard and almost caramelize on you. So you have to you eat it while it's still hot. So I think that's about the consistency of what I want. And you'll notice that some of the milk is right there, and that's why you're going to use the strainer. So that should come out pretty clear. You know, still might have a little bit of imperfection in it, but... That's home cooking. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, I'm going to take that off. And also what I want to do is I want to taste it. Mm. Very good. Now, I have not used this before, so hopefully this will work for me. I'm not sure if that one's going to work. What I'm going to have to do is let that go through like that. Now, you're not going to be using these strawberries here. So don't worry about crushing them a little bit. It won't hurt it. Those strawberries would use just to flavor. Okay. That seems to be working okay. You can go ahead and move that around like that. going through fine. I'm check underneath to make sure it still looks good. Looks all right. Just pour the rest of that on there. Just like so. That looks okay. And then just push these down a little to get the excess out of it. You know, that doesn't look that appetizing, but the end result is really great. Now, right there, I can return in there. I don't really need that for anything now. I'm going to wash out a glass container. Dry that off for you. And I'm going to pour the sauce right in there. I'll show you what I have. And okay, I've got enough right there. And that'll be the sauce for it. Move these aside. And now the next part is pretty simple. You can use the homemade batter that I showed you on the screen. Or go to the store and go ahead and buy your own batter. It's no problem. I recommend that you use um, a type of shortening. 
um, because what that'll do, excuse me for a moment, is shortening doesn't burn quite as much as if you were to have, say, butter or, or oil or anything in the, in the pan. It tends not to burn. Plus I have a non-stick, that's enough. Plus I have a non-stick pan. What I want you to do is add in about two cups of cut up strawberry to the batter and mix it right around in there. When you're making pancakes, you want to try to only flip them one time because when you, when you handle pancakes a little bit too much, what happens is they tend to come out a little tough. So you want them to be light and fluffy. I want to make sure that my pan gets hot. Um, a garnish that you can use with this is you can get a sprig of mint and put the mint on it with some uh, strawberry. And let me go ahead, add approximately about a quarter of a cup, which I have right here. You could even add a little bit more if you wanted to, a little bit more batter because of the strawberries that are in it. That's not a perfectly round one, but that won't hurt it. And I have my flipper over here. The lights are hot in here today. And just let that go. And normal, just as any other pancake, wait for it to bubble up here on the top. And that sauce, I want to make sure that it's not thickening too much, the sauce. And that still looks really good. You can also do this with blueberries, and you can do the same thing with the sauce that I did with the blueberries before, which is, it's very simple to make. You just use about a cup or two, depending on how many people you're going to have, of milk or cream, and you let that heat up. And you want to try and let it heat gradually. I did it a little quick for the show, but you want to try and let it heat up gradually and continue to stir it. If you stop stirring it, you run the risk of burning the um, sugar, and that's what you don't want to do. You have to be very careful. That's just about ready to be flipped. Give it another second or so. And you don't want it to burn, so you have to be very careful of how you do it and constantly stir it. Um, it's kind of similar with the flour, and uh, if you're cooking with flour, and you stir and stir, and then all of a sudden you stop stirring, and the next thing you know you have lumps in it. Well, that can harden and caramelize and burn inside. It doesn't take much, so you have to be very careful. Okay, and that looks fine. And that'll take about another minute or so. And I think what we'll do now is we're going to start on our next recipe, and I'll at the end I'll bring all these over, and I'll show you what they all look like together. It'll look really great. So let's start on the next recipe. I think next we'll start with the Welsh rare bit and then we'll lead in to the uh, omelet after that. So we'll be right back and we'll start on the next one. Okay, now our next recipe is going to be called Welsh rare bit. Um, it's a fairly simple recipe. We're going to start with some toast and I have some more in the toaster oven over there. and. Uh, it's, it's not a very difficult recipe. What you're going to start with is you're going to want four cups of milk. And I already have two in my pan here. So I'm going to add my other two cups. And I'm going to start off with two cups of cheese. And then I'm going to move myself on up to four cups of cheese if I need it. Um, let's see here. Oh, that's my other toast. Hang on a moment. these other pieces of toast out. All right, that'll be fine. All right, now what I want to do is I'm going to turn on, let's see which one I'm at here, turn on the milk, and I'm going to scald the milk as well. So while I'm waiting for that to scald, we'll go ahead and I'll put up the recipe, and we'll, when we come back, we'll, I'll show you what we'll do.
Okay, now that you've seen the recipe, you can tell there's only a few ingredients. It's fairly simple. Um, my milk is getting pretty hot, so I'm going to start adding the cheese gradually in and make sure that it starts to melt in there. The reason why I'm adding it gradually is because if you add all of it at once, the cheese is cold and it's going to take even longer to get that to melt. So add it gradually until you start to see it starting to melt, and that's just starting to right now. So continue to do that. If you're using a wire whisk, it will stick, but there's not much you can do about that. Let's continue. Add a little bit more cheese. Now there's only two cups here, and it's going into four cups of milk. So I'm going to see how thick it is, and then by trial and error, I'm going to I have another two cups of cheese in case I need it, because I I have a desired consistency that I want to get it to. You can make it as thick or thin as you want to; it doesn't really matter. And you'll also notice out in front I have the Worcestershire and some cooking wine. And when you're using a regular white wine versus a cooking wine, um, one of the things you'll have to note is when you're using cooking wine, it's almost like it's concentrated, so you don't need a lot. So and, um, you'll notice when I put up the recipe, I didn't state how much you're supposed to put in because it's up to you. Put it into your taste. Whatever you like uh, for flavoring, you put it in. And you can even leave out the cooking wine it, or the wine. It does, you don't have to have it. Some people add beer into it, depending on how your flavor is. It doesn't really matter. I want to continue this. Keep it going. This part of it is the most time-consuming part, but it's not too bad. Let me see here. Scoop some of the cheese off. there. Now it's probably just going to clog right back up again, but that's okay. I'm going to turn up my heat a little bit. It's not heating fast enough that I would like it. You want to be careful not to boil it. You just want to heat it enough to make a cheese sauce. Some people also like to add a little bit of flour into it. I don't because I don't like the flavor it gives. I think it tends to be a little, um, I don't know, I just don't care for the consistency. So continue with this. It's almost getting there. Scrape that again. This is a good recipe to do. Um, you don't just have to have it for breakfast. It's good for a lunch. And you can also put the cheese sauce that you make into the refrigerator. And it heats up in the microwave well. Just stir it around as you're heating it in the microwave. While I'm doing this, um, I'd like to put up the address for the station. If you have any comments or questions or if you'd like to be a guest on the show, um, why don't you give us either call or write us and uh, take a look at that now and when we come back we'll, this should be thickened up and we'll start to add the other stuff Okay, now that you've seen that address and the phone number, I think that um, if we can get a shot of this, this is about the consistency of what I like it. And the first thing that I'm going to add, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. You want to continue to stir that. You could even move it off a little bit because I want to make sure this is stirred up real well, shaken up real well. Now, like I said before, this is something that you go ahead and add your own into until you like the taste of it. And I happen to like the Worcestershire taste quite a bit, so I'm going to go ahead and add 
that much. And I'm gonna take my spoon and I wanna give that a taste test. A little bit more. I'm gonna stir that out, put that back over the heat to keep it hot. And I'm gonna go ahead and rinse that off because I have other people here with me and I don't think they want my mouth all over it. Stir that in, and I'll give it another taste. Tastes pretty good. Now, move that back off the burner, and I'll add some wine into it. Start with maybe an ounce or so, and then taste it from there. Like I said, you want to be real careful because it can get strong. That's probably strong enough, but I want a little bit more Worcestershire in it. And basically, that's pretty much a done recipe. It's fairly easy, but you get calcium in it because you have your cheese. And uh, it's got a kick with the wine. But it's a it's a, a real good morning meal. Or you could use it for lunch or you could use it as a side dish with something else. Variations that you can do with this is you can add mushrooms, um, you could add tomato, onion. Most of the time you should probably, uh, if you're adding onion or something like that, you want to cook it ahead of time because you don't want the crunchiness because you're going to, this is basically a soft recipe. It's when you hit the hit the uh, toast with it, the toast will absorb it and it gets soft. So, right here, I have this. And take my ladle and go ahead and add it right on there like that. Push that together, and that's. I'm going to take that and give it a taste. It tastes great. Okay. The next recipe that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the Western Salsa Omelet. Um, so hold on one minute, one minute, and when I come back, we'll put that together, and we'll have a good time, and I'll bring everything over to the table, and we'll show you what we've got. Okay, we're back. This time we're gonna cook our omelet. First thing that we're gonna start out with is we, obviously we have our staples, we have our eggs. And what, what I'm gonna combine in this uh, recipe, it's fairly simple. Um, I chose, instead of regular onions, I chose green onions with the top still on. I wanna leave that. I have one chili pepper, or rather jalapeno pepper. Um, I picked an orange pepper. You can pick, I wanted the sweet flavor, and orange and uh, red peppers are usually sweet flavored. I chose the orange just for color, it, it, nothing other than that. Um, your salsa, what you're going to use is your topping, and I'm going to heat that in the microwave, and one tomato. This will yield between probably, depending on how big, how much stuff you want in it, about three or four omelets. So. I'm just going to use half this tomato. I'm going to cut the tomato first. And I'm going to put that aside right there. And cut the top out. Just like so. Pull that out of there. 
go in the trash. And I'm gonna see if I don't have a sharper knife than that one. I definitely don't need that one. Let's see what we've got here. I think this one's probably a little bit sharper, but not too much. Got that. And when I'm chopping all this stuff up, I'm going to chop it pretty fine. I don't want big chunks of things in the in the omelet, so I'm going to do it pretty fine. You can do it any way that you want. If you like bigger pieces, then fine, but I don't particularly care for them. Plus, they don't cook well enough when you're making them big, especially with eggs, because you don't want to burn them. Probably enough for what I'm going to do for that. Now, take the green onion, slice that. And that'll work just fine. Don't do that. You're not really supposed to. You get the, the hot stuff. out and I'm gonna make these pretty thin you can also if you'd like to choose to go to the grocery store and uh, get the pickled ones they have pickled jalapeno that you can pick up and they're not quite as strong I didn't get the strongest jalapeno in the store if you like it real super hot then you're more than welcome to but I didn't particularly want to do that that should do it on the jalapeno. If you want more, you can add more. And I'm going to cut that up a bit. Small pieces. Some people like to seed them because that's where most of the hotness comes from is the seeds. But since I'm trying to attain it being hot, it doesn't make sense for me to take them out. Just make a little cut there. Push that in and pull it right out and now bring it over to the sink and I'll break it in half take all the seeds out wash that right down I'm going to take probably about half of it and Cut it into strips first. This should be about enough. Again, I'm cutting these into small squares. I'm not gonna make it real, real big. Oh, about like this. This is a really colorful dish. Um, I'm not gonna add cheese for this one, but that's also something you can add some Monterey Jack cheese that would be fine with it and I'm gonna turn the skillet on and I want to add a little bit more butter to that because it's a pretty big pan I don't want it to stick anywhere all right I have a little bit of milk in there right now and I'm gonna take the tomato green pepper jalapeno green onion and jalapeno, put that all in there, and get my whisk, let's move that around in the milk, doesn't look like much yet, and I'm going to add three eggs, there we go, now I'm going to mix that together, like so, Heating up. Now, I'm 
pan doesn't seem to want to get hot quick enough here. Not sure what that's going on there. Move that all around in the pan. I might even add a little bit more still yet. You might not want to use a pan that's quite that big, unless you're going to be doing a couple at a time. But this here is a perfect starter for you. You know, it's a great breakfast. Okay, let's get that all moved around in there, like so. That looks good. Make sure that's up. And then I'll add this right in there. And move it all around so that it gets dispersed nice and evenly inside there. Okay. Now, we're going to let that cook for a second. I'm going to put up the recipe. And when we come back, we'll flip this over. And we'll have our omelet. And we're going to go sit down. And we're going to take a look at what we have. So I'll be right back with you. Take a look at this. Okay, now we're back. I'm just loosening up the egg from the sides over here. And I'm going to take that off so it doesn't stick to the bottom anymore, which it's doing a little bit, but that's okay. I've said it in a show before. Cooking's not exactly an exact science, so if it doesn't want to come out, that's fine. And we'll just have to turn it over in pieces. But that's okay. Let's see where we go here. Just like that. Give it about another couple seconds on that side, like that. And then after that, we'll bring it over. Um, and a piece right there, flip over. And you'll notice if you can get a shot of it. By leaving it on that one side for that amount of time, what it does to the eggs, let's see if I can get a good shot of it. If you can see that, it makes them real fluffy. The eggs stay real fluffy, and that's a much better omelet. Some of the ones you go to the restaurants and get, they're all just flopped together, and they're not very good. But you can see this is real puffy. It's a good omelet. And that's done. And there's nothing to it. Really simple. OK, so now what I'll do. I'll go over here. And do we have any plates left in that one? There we go. I'll transfer this onto a plate. And you can side this with a little bit of either bacon or sausage or maybe some toast. And that's what I got for you. Why don't I come over here? We'll sit down. I'll show you what I have you for this show. And We'll wrap it up for this one. Okay, well, that's it for this edition of Soup to Nuts. I hope you get some good ideas. Um, we have here the strawberry pancake with the strawberry syrup that we made ourselves. Welsh rarebit that I put a little bit of pepper on to. And the salsa omelet that I have. I just took some salsa, I heated it in the microwave, pour it right on top, and you're ready to go. Um, we we'll hope you uh, enjoyed this show and hope you join in to us again next week. And for now, keep your elbows off the table. I'm Steve Sprague, and thanks for joining me.